Hello everyone, I do hope you're well and in this video I'm going to give you some tips and techniques for specifically photographing birds in the snow. Number one is exposure. So what is the best way to expose for birds in the snow? Probably the most common question in terms of photographing in snowy conditions. And the first thing to bear in mind is the way that the camera's exposure meter works. So it works best on anything that's mid-toned, neutral grey or green grass for example, it will get the exposure fairly accurate. Wherever you have anything that's lighter in the frame, it's going to confuse the exposure meter. So if you're photographing a bird and there's lots of snow around it, uh, particularly if you're using like a, a valuative or matrix exposure metering because there's so much light reflecting back it's actually going to reduce the exposure so in that situation uh, it's often going to come out too dark and what you need to do is override that in the opposite direction you would overexpose uh, so how much you overexpose is a bit of trial and error and experience I would say if, if the snow's covering quite a wide area of the viewfinder filling quite a lot of the viewfinder then I would maybe go for about plus one and a half would be would be a guess uh, sometimes it could be less sometimes you might need to overexpose by plus two maybe even more on occasion it's not really possible to say that you should simply overexpose by this much in the snow because there's just too many variables so one of those variables is how big the bird is in the frame if you're using a evaluative metering uh, if the bird's very small for example and you've got a huge amount of the the viewfinder covered in snow then it's going to make a difference to your exposure as opposed to a bird that's bigger in the frame and less snow so it's there's a lot of variables in there and again experience is what counts the most also you may get a difficult situation where you have a blackbird in this case a blackbird uh, against the snow so you've got a really difficult exposure situation there with black and white what I like to do personally as well is to use the histogram specifically when I'm photographing in snowy conditions particularly if the background is snow and I actually judge my exposure by looking at the histogram and using the snow as a guide so I know that the snow is very very light and the snow should be towards the end of the histogram towards the right hand side so I look at my image and I will aim for that second peak on the right hand side to be very close towards the end of the histogram and if I do that I find that I tend to get a really good even exposure of the bird and the snow so everything I've talked about so far really applies if you're using like a, a general exposure metering system, uh, like evaluative or matrix metering, uh, where it takes into account a lot of the viewfinder and maybe the center area as well. The other thing you could try is to use spot metering. So that's another technique. Uh, you take your exposure reading from a very small part of the frame and you just use that. So in this case, you'd you use your focus point, you'd get your focus point on the bird, uh, spot metering, and you'd take your exposure reading from there. Uh, so then it's not taking anything else into account. The rest of the frame with all the snow is just irrelevant. It just takes its reading from that one place on the bird, which should be much more neutral. And then you wouldn't need to do any exposure compensation you wouldn't need to add any plus exposure compensation you just go with that reading you might see quite a few images in this video that are actually taken with much older cameras and the reason for that is quite simply that my best images in the snow tend to be taken years ago because we just don't get that many snowy winters these days uh, but all the principles all the techniques still apply Tip number two is all about background and more specifically how the snow affects your background and the difference it makes to your images. Um, so when I'm looking for feeding stations I'm always looking for clean backdrops and I know a lot of people like that and I've often shot towards uh, the field or like the edges of fields um, and I get a really nice clean backdrop by doing that. Often just pure green maybe slightly yellowish as it changes slightly through the seasons but the problem with that is if it snows so it might be a great backdrop in what we'd call normal weather in this country, non-snow. Um, but if it snows, then it's not gonna look too great. And the reason is, if it snows on that field, it's just gonna go completely blanket white. There's nothing gonna break it up. And I don't think those backgrounds look too great in bird photographs. Uh, they can also create, too, you get too much light, too many hot spots, a little bit too overexposed at time. So I find it's much better uh, to shoot against woodland, for example. So if I was to just adjust my angle and shoot against this tree line here, this edge of woodland, I'm going to get a much better background if it actually does snow. Woodland areas, when it kind of, when it covers the branches, you get like a really nice mixture. It kind of merges with the snow and the tree colour and you get a really nice mixture. It tends to give more of a, a grey colour, more of a neutral backdrop. I think that looks much better as a, as a snow background personally. I think it's much better than the, the pure white backdrops that you'd get from the field. So now when I'm setting up my feeding stations, I'm looking for clean backdrops, as I always am, but I'm also thinking what happens if it snows. Um, 
have I got an area, a patch of trees, something if it snows that it's going to work in those conditions as well. In terms of the background, I do think those woodland backdrops are fantastic for snow, uh, but also if you can shoot towards an area that's even darker, maybe it's more in shade, then the darker background can work well because it can show up the snow. If it's actually snow falling, then you can see the snowflakes against that dark background. Number three is shutter speed. So you can adjust the shutter speed to get the effect that you want of the snow. So you could use a faster shutter speed to get the snow kind of frozen around the bird. You could use a slow shutter speed just to show a bit more movement, or you could use a really slow shutter speed to record the snow with streaks all around the bird. Totally depends on what you want to do. In this image here of a jay, which is taken pretty close to where I am now at a feeding station a couple of years ago. Here the shutter speed's fairly high, one 640 of a second and that's been fast enough although there isn't a huge amount of snow around I would have certainly liked more it's been fast enough to freeze the snow in the air around this beautiful beautiful bird and in contrast this image of a female tufted duck uh, photographed on a lake at a local park here I've used a much much slower shutter speed and what that's done is allow the movement of the snow to be recorded much more movement as streaks and it's almost like a diagonal diagonal lines coming across the frame around the bird and that's a really nice effect as well tip number four is all about perches if you're setting up perches specifically at a feeding station uh, I don't have any other perches just this this old birch stump which was for woodpeckers um, the thing with this one is if you set up the perches if you know it's going to snow you can set up the perches before in the right position and then what's going to happen is the snow is just going to naturally cover the perches so if you wait till it snows and then go and put out a perch it won't look as good maybe you can try and put some snow on it it never looks quite as good as if if it's natural so if you know the snow's coming you get forecast for the next morning for example then head out put your perches up before the snow comes whether it's um, stumps branches or thin perches try and get them up before and then when you arrive once it's snowed it's going to cover those perches nicely it's going to look much more natural and there's few things that look as good as a completely laden branch covered in natural fresh snow and also consider looking for a colorful perch if you are photographing in the snow uh, depending how much snow there is it might look a bit monotone so it's worth looking for a really nice colorful perch to add a splash of color to your images uh, dogwood is a really great example used in this picture of a long-tailed tit really really bright red the dogwood plant and in this case it, it goes quite nicely with the the pinkish part of the plumage of the bird as well Tip number five is lighting and particularly using the snow as a fill-in light. Uh, this is one that I really enjoy myself. Um, you may have heard of fill-in flash, which is basically where you use a little bit of flash to brighten up the shadow areas. And you can do a very similar thing with snow, but in a purely natural way. So if you imagine if you've got a lot of snow lying on the ground, that's automatically gonna boost a load of light back. So if you're photographing birds landing on perches, if you have got a lot of snow underneath, it's going to bounce a lot of light back underneath the bird into those areas that are often can be in shadow particularly if you've got strong light as I am today struggling to light this video and it can actually be really noticeable in your images when you look at them um, sometimes we're photographing these conditions and you, you wouldn't even know that the snow on the ground necessarily you look at the bird and you look at the feather detail and you can hardly find any shadow areas on the bird so bear that in mind when there's snow around on the ground particularly just use that to your benefit use it as a giant natural reflector and this will even work with birds in flight as well if they come low enough so if you imagine if you've got a field completely covered in snow if the bird comes low enough then again that will act as like a giant reflector just reflecting all that light and it will illuminate the underside of the wings which can be very very difficult to do otherwise here with this image of a red kite taken many many years ago now uh, hence it's on an older camera the birds were coming in close enough that the snow covered field underneath was just reflecting loads of light back up under the wings and I was able to get images that you don't see too often with really again every feather on the bird completely lit from underneath absolutely beautiful Number six is simply about opportunities. So uh, if you do have snowfall, you might be able to get images that would be more difficult to get in normal conditions. And even your local, your, your common birds, your blue tits, chaffinches and robins down at the local park, they might be easier to photograph because they are hungrier. It's harder to find food and you probably find that they come much closer, even get a little bit tame. And the same goes for bigger birds, such as birds of prey. And in various winters, I have put out food, baited birds of prey, red kites and buzzards. 
Uh, this is something that I feel comfortable with doing because I, I don't do it on a prolonged spell and I try and do it in more of an erratic nature, uh, which, which I think is, is more, more natural. There was one winter, I think it was 2012 to 2013, where I did put out food um, on a farm for red kites. I got a couple of buzzards, but plenty of red kites, which did come down to the food. And that's simply because food's just much harder to find with the ground completely covered in snow. They're really, really desperate for that food and that's going to help them, help see them through the winter. And not only did it allow me to get lovely portraits of these birds, I was even to get able to get lots of interaction between birds, including fighting over the food. Again, if you do do this, um, consider the effect it's going to have on the birds. If you're going to do it for a prolonged spell, um, I would maybe try and make it more of an erratic nature and tail it off towards the end so they don't get too dependent on it. Uh, number seven is clothing and the reason I've put this in the video is because really I think clothing is almost as important as the photography itself in snowy conditions because if you can't keep yourself warm and dry you're not going to want to take pictures. So three things I think that you should have before anything else is uh, number one a hat, just a simple hat just to keep your help keep your body temperature up. Uh, number two is a decent pair of gloves. So you might want to have a system where you have two different types of gloves for operating the camera, one for carrying your gear, or something like this, which is much more expensive. Um, these are really warm, windproof, but they also have a flip out finger and thumb so you can still operate the camera controls. And then number three is just a decent pair of boots. Uh, something like this is perfect. These are obviously waterproof, but they're also neoprene lined. I wear these all the time, but in snow they're great because they're neoprene lined, which will keep you nice and warm. And then also, uh, I would say something like this. Uh, these are waterproof. These are like dungarees trousers, but these are waterproof, but they're also got a really good lining in them. Keep you nice and warm, but will also give you the opportunity to lie down in the snow and not get too cold and wet. Uh, if you're looking for something like this, look for, for deer stalker equipment, um, anything where it's really designed for, for stalking, which is obviously different to what we're doing here, but the same principles, the idea being that you're going to be staying in one place for a long time. So it tends to be the best gear for wildlife photography is also the best, uh, the best gear for shooting and stalking wildlife as well. So I hope that's all helped you. Um, Hope those seven tips are useful for photographing in the snow. If you have any questions, put them in the comments box. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for any techniques or clothing, anything to do with bird photography in the snow, do put them in the comments. Um, as much as I enjoy reading them, other people as well get to read those and it's good to get uh, knowledge shared in these videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you sometime in snow, sometime soon.